This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Mount Kisco, New York. Thank you for joining us for worship in person or online. Today is the first Sunday of the month and we will be celebrating together the Lord's Supper. Make sure you have picked up in the back of the church your individualized package that includes a wafer and unfermented wine. Jesus said, when two or three gather together in my name, I will be there also. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Please rise if you are able when you hear the sound of the bells. Please join me in the call to worship. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Our heart is glad in the Lord our God. Love the Lord, all you saints. fallen short of the glory of God, yet we are justified by the gift of God's grace. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin together. Please join me in the innocent prayer of confession. Holy God, we have wearied you with the outward forms of worship, while our hands and hearts have remained unclean. We have failed to do justice, to defend the oppressed, and to plead the cause of the bereft and the lonely. Forgive us, we pray, and cleanse us thoroughly, 
Make us willing and obedient to your word and spirit. May we and all your children who are in need enjoy the bounty of your heavenly provision. Amen. Let us now share our private prayers and confessions silently with God. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Being none, let us pray. Almighty God, you have promised to hear us when we pray in the name of your Son. In confidence and trust, we pray this morning for the church. Enliven our mission together as the body of Christ. Give us the power to reveal Christ to the world in word and action. We pray for the world around us. Lead each nation into justice and peace so we may respect each other in freedom and in truth. We pray for this community. Inspire with wisdom all those whose decisions affect the lives of others. Give grace to all those whose lives are linked to ours. We pray for all those in need. Comfort and restore all who suffer this morning in body, mind, and spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. We remember before you those who have died and pray for those who will die today so they may know your peace. We remember those who have died in Ukraine, those who have died from gun violence, those who have died from unexpected floods and tornadoes. We remember those who have died in the faith of Jesus Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Make our mouths speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill our bodies with the life that is Christ within us. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. You get to see me twice. The first reading today is from Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory. And by its great might, it cannot save. <clears throat> Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death 
and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Tim. The second scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament letter to the Hebrews, chapters 11, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. This passage may be found in your pew Bible on page 977. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared, the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, with Sarah's involvement, he received the power of procreation, even though he was too old because he considered him faithful who had him promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better homeland, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was a Russian novelist who won the Nobel Prize. He was famous around the world for his lonely and courageous opposition to communism. As a political prisoner in the Soviet gulag camps, Solzhenitsyn was forced to work 12 hours a day on a starvation diet, which eventually made him gravely ill. The camp doctors predicted that he would die. One afternoon, while shoveling sand under a blazing sun, Solzhenitsyn simply stopped working. He stopped working even though he knew that the guards would beat him severely. He reached the point where he just could not go on. Then he saw another prisoner, a fellow Christian, moving toward him cautiously. With his cane, the man quickly drew a cross in the sand and then erased it. In that moment, Solzhenitsyn felt the hope of the gospel message flood through his soul. His situation had not changed, but his faith steadied him and encouraged him to continue. His faith gave him the courage to face that difficult day and the months of imprisonment that followed. The, the sermon this morning is about faith. The book of Hebrews was written 
to encourage an early Christian community to continue its faith journey in the face of hardship. The original audience for Hebrews was demoralized by persecution and hostility. They endured public ridicule, had their property confiscated, and were imprisoned like Solzhenitsyn. Some renounced their faith, others avoided worship. The Bible lesson is part of a longer sermon that was intended to provide a message of hope to Christians under pressure. Faith is a powerful force, according to Hebrews, because it helps us endure and persevere. How do we respond when a loved one dies? What do we do when the job we depend on goes away? How do we survive the next four years when our presidential candidate loses? Faith allows us to live our daily lives with a sense of hope. Faith gives us the sense that God exists and has our interests in mind even on the bad days. Faith supports us in another more mysterious way. Faith allows us to feel confident about things that aren't even visible. Faith encourages believers in verse 16 to seek a better country. In other words, a heavenly dest destination not of this earth. This second aspect of faith encourages Christians to believe that there is something greater or better that all of us are headed for. This heavenly journey draws us forward and gives us hope. Faith is something that builds over time, but at some point requires a decision. I have a friend now in her late 30s who grew up in an educated middle-class family. Margaret never attended church or received religious training of any time kind as a child. In college, Margaret spent a research summer in Europe and was intrigued by the stained glass windows that she saw in cathedrals. She started reading the Bible to learn more. In law school, Margaret started attending church regularly and was baptized at age 27. While completing her law degree, she decided to take a few classes at the Divinity School and eventually decided to walk away from her legal education and seek ordination as a minister. There was no single moment in Margaret's life when she converted to religious faith. She gradually decided that there was something missing in her life that was hard to describe but important. She decided to believe in God. In Hebrews, faith gives us strength for day-to-day -day living. Faith moves us towards a future in relationship with God. But these descriptions of faith are inward and subjective. What I really like about the scripture passage is the emphasis on illustrations and examples. I once heard a labor organizer named Saul Alinsky discuss the Declaration of Independence. Everyone remembers the inspirational opening sentences in the Declaration about our inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. According to Alinsky, we skip the rest of the document because it's lengthy and boring. Alinsky claimed that the rest of the Declaration is the important part because it provides the detailed list of complaints about British rule that precipitated the American Revolution. In the book of Hebrews, the emphasis is on acts of faith, not statements about faith. Faith is created when Abraham responds to a call from God. Faith is expressed when Abraham sets out on a journey not knowing where he is going. Faith is sustained when Abraham lives as a stranger and alien 
in the very land that God promised him. Faith is rewarded when Abraham and Sarah have a baby when they are too old to do so. Faith in the Bible is about responding to God actively, the way Abraham does. The way to discover faith is to take the risk of doing something that you think God wants done in your life. The way to nourish faith is to help God bring something into existence that did not exist previously without your help. When I was in seminary, I served as a temporary pastor for a few weeks at a Presbyterian church in Newburgh, New York. They were struggling. Church membership was down to 25 people. The church building needed maintenance and was in a challenging neighborhood. This did not stop church members from practicing their faith. They did not worry about themselves or the condition of the building or their future as a church. The principal activity of the church outside of worship was renovating old houses, which they gave away to needy families in the community. They completed five houses in five years, never let their own problems stop this work. Over 10 years later, the church is still there, building houses, moving forward, that's faith. Faith is not defined in the scripture lesson as complete doubt-free acceptance of Jesus. That kind of faith, focusing on beliefs without room for questions or reservations of any kind is beyond most of us. In our tradition, faith can be small as a mustard seed because moving mountains never depends on the size of our faith, but on the size of God. God works with faith of every size and shape. If we are willing to take the risk and trust daily in the blessings of God, we can act faithfully in our lives and accomplish God's purposes. What does faith look like in Mount Kisco, New York? It is not exotic or esoteric. It is coming to church on Sunday when you don't feel like it. It's bringing the next generation forward for the children's time. It's supporting the local food pantry for more than 20 years. It is managing an affordable housing community for seniors called Fellowship Hall for 60 years. It is saying out loud in public that gay and lesbian and transgender people are children of God. It is saying out loud in public that black lives matter. I want to acknowledge this morning that religious faith is not for everyone. Faith does not guarantee prosperity or success by the standards of the world. It does not deliver us from evil or prevent suffering. As I may have just demonstrated, faith can be a little controversial. Remember that the promises of God are not always fulfilled on our timetable. We are sometimes asked in faith to defer fulfillment in this life in exchange for something mysterious in the next. Abraham lived a long and faithful life, but when his wife Sarah died, he did not have enough money to bury her. Even heroes of the faith, like Mother Teresa, have long, empty stretches when their faith feels empty and unrewarded. We need to be realistic about faith because we live in a world that doesn't always encourage religious belief. In fact, the world often trains us to not believe. 
when we go shopping or listen to the news or plan our financial lives or cast our vote in an election, we tend to be thoughtful and cautious. We sift through information and ask questions. We rely on reason and experience, not faith. Our paper money and coins proclaim, in God we trust, but the world we live in encourages us to, encourages us to trust in other things. Antonin Scalia, the former Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, a devout Catholic, advised Christians to remember that the surrounding culture is hostile to religious belief. He wrote, God assumed from the beginning that the wise of the world would view Christians as fools, and he has not been disappointed. If I brought any message today, it is this, Scalia said. Have the courage to have your wisdom regarded as stupidity. Be fools for Christ. And have the courage to suffer the contempt of the sophisticated world." Unquote. Christians today are far from perfect. We don't have all the answers, and we are not better than other people. But we are different from other people when we place our trust in God. As human beings, we yearn for the eternal and the transcendent in our lives. Our desire to know God is a strong and enduring part of our nature. We are right to value faith highly. At the end of the day, Christians dare to believe because of what God has already done for us in Jesus Christ. Our faith allows us to see the world with open eyes, yet discover God acting in it. If we can endure and persist in the face of life's challenges, God will not be ashamed to call us her own. The message of this sermon is that we should take the risk of faith. Faith, as we have learned today, is more than prayer and worship and a set of beliefs. It means doing something in your own life to make the kingdom of God come. It's about things hoped for but not yet seen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the faithful in every time and place who have decided to trust in you. Help us to have faith in our time that you are there always. Amen. Keep alert and stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Strengthen the faint of heart. Support those who are weak and have patience with everyone. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. <laughs>